Unreal Engine 4.19 has a large list of changes, and among them are a few of the smaller changes that I want to highlight here. We're mainly going to cover some of the smaller changes to materials. So let's go ahead and take a look. The first thing we're going to look at is our parameters panel. Prior to 4.19, if you wanted to adjust parameters inside of a material, you'd have to go to each parameter and adjust them individually. 4.19 adds our parameters default panel, which we can find here or under if we, well, window parameter defaults. And it gives us a list of all of the parameters we have in our material. We can edit in one nice panel. Simple as that. Second thing is child and sibling instances. Let's say, let me go ahead and close down these bodies. We have this material. And then we'll go back to our material once I can figure out where it's at. And we'll pull up our instance. And here's our material instance. And we're happy with the way this looks. Now we can make duplicates traditionally, or we can make more material instances. And we have the ability to adjust them individually. But let's say we wanted something kind of like a hierarchy. We can now chase, we can now save siblings and children. So if we save a sibling, it's going to go ahead and ask us to name it. And where it's going to take all of the settings we have right now, it's going to save them over to another material instance. That's basically a brother or sister, or it's on the same level. Any changes we make inside of here are going to be for this item itself. Any changes we make in our main material are, of course, going to apply to any instances, which this is. The difference being, if we were to make another child, for example, any changes to one sibling will not affect another sibling. They will stay amongst themselves. So I could change the base color of this to something like purple, and this sibling is going to keep its settings independent of any other siblings and independent of the parent. Now, if we want to make more of a parent-child relationship, we can save a child. So I'm going to save a child. We'll call this one child. And we'll open it up. And you'll notice on the child, for the roughness and the specular, we have these values. And you'll notice they're set to normal. We don't have the ability to reset them to defaults. These are considered the defaults for this item because it's a child. If we were to adjust them, let's say we wanted no specular, well, then we can adjust it. And we can reset it back to the defaults of the parent. And the nice thing about that is because it's a child or the parent, if we ever go back into the parent and say, oh, you know what? I want all of these ones to actually be different. I want it to be really rough and have no specular. That's what I actually wanted. It'll apply to any children. So if we go back into the child, you can notice now we have the ability to reset back to defaults. And we're going to reset those to the defaults and apply whatever the parent has decided is best for these children. And of course, we can still override settings. We could go with, you know... A type of a yellow color and that'll stay unique in here but we can always just set back to whatever the parent think is best third thing we have in here are two different nodes or functions we have a channel mass parameter and we have a show material function so we're going to cover the channel mass parameter first so let me close these let me go back to what i had open this is going to be a material inside of here oh inside of here there we go and this is basically a material that we've set up and this is for the mannequin. So if we were to open this up, oops, I need to change this to the mannequin for our preview mesh. And this is what it's set up. And I've got, a, you know, I've got it green over here because I've adjusted it. But we have a new node option here called mask. And if we were to open up the actual body material itself and we look over here, we find I have a mask node. This is a channel mask parameter. So if we typed in channel mask parameter will get this node. We can name it however we want, and we have basically a couple options in here. We can change from red, green, blue, or alpha. What it's going to do is it's going to take in an input and output that channel only. So in this case here, you can see I have the entire texture going into this mass parameter. I have it set to blue, and only the blue is being sent out. And of course, we can change that to green. You'll see the green and the red. And it's used when we have masks like this. And the useful part about this is because it's a parameter, now that it's inside the material, it's in the material instance. And we can easily adjust things on a design level. So like in here, once it's done compiling, for that mask slot at the bottom, I'm using the blue channel. And we can see that these are the results. But I can easily change it to the green channel. You Now we can see we have different items being colored. I can change it to the red channel. And now we have another set of items being colored. So it allows us to easily adjust which channel we want to use on a mask by using the channel mask parameter inside of our material instances. And lastly, we have two more nodes. Let's go ahead and go down to our third person map, and we'll pull this up. 
And these are new blueprint nodes. So let's go ahead and grab our character and open him up. And I've set up a little test down here. We have the show material section, is material section shown, and show all material sections. And basically what this does is here's our mesh. Our mesh has two materials. One is assigned to the body. One is assigned to a little logo on the chest. If we look right here, we see this little red logo. I made it red to make it easier. And those are two different material elements. We can hide and show different material elements using these nodes at runtime. So for my example, if I run it, let's look at the chest. I'm going to hit M. It's going to show true. That means, yes, we are showing this material. If I hit M again, it's going to toggle it. And now it's not showing that material. And of course, I can do M a few more times. It's going to toggle on and off. So you can easily design your character with different materials and affect if they're visible or not. Rather than just changing the color or the vectors or the parameters, you can actually hide or unhide materials themselves, different material sections. And the nice thing is it has, if you mess up, you always have the show all material, takes in the mesh and puts them all back to visible. And of course, the nice thing is it's going to just take an ID. And I could do this, for example. And now when I run it, we're actually going to lose our character itself because that's zero. Now we just have a little floating red. And that's it. Those are a few of the smaller changes to materials introduced in 4.19. Of course, there is the full documentation available on the documentation page if you're looking for more information.